Hey guys, my name's Dustin, the Pro Picker. If you're new to the channel, what I do is I go to yard sales, thrift stores, flea markets, and more, and look for items to flip for a profit on eBay. And then I share my experiences with you guys here on YouTube. So this is a little bit different than my normal video today. I'm gonna share a story with you guys. Something else to note is, we do a pretty decent volume uh, for a husband wife team. So alongside my wife, we handle fifteen to twenty thousand dollars approximately in gross eBay sales monthly. And that's all from just randomly sourced inventory. So it's not like, you know, we're selling five hundred widgets or anything like that or 200 different pairs of the same shoe or something. We are, you know, it's just random stuff that I'm sourcing with a purpose when I when I buy these items at garage sales and thrift shops, flea markets and more. This has to do with legal topics. I am not a legal professional. Anything I say here is not advice. I may get a couple things here or there wrong. This is not scripted. I'm just sharing my story with you from my biased perspective. So with that in mind, I purchased some Amazon mystery boxes, basically filled with returns and shelf pulls from a bin sale. So they mainly do items in their bins, but they had these mystery boxes that I don't frequent really anymore. I haven't been there in months. However, uh, I did get these boxes. I bought four of them and I had like $120 in. And honestly, the boxes weren't amazing or anything. It wasn't really the stuff I was kind of hoping that was gonna be in there. Eventually we found a toothbrush and this toothbrush was just kind of in like packaging, like a piece of cardboard uh, stuck into some plastic, the clear plastic where you could just hang it on a slot rack um, in a retail store or whatever. And it was brand new and it was a dog toothbrush. <laughs> so we were just like, hey, we'll list it, whatever. And so, you know, take the pictures, get it listed on eBay. I think we had maybe three to four minutes of labor. I mean, it was the quickest thing ever. Cause like when I comped it out, it came out to about $14 shipped. That's free shipping that we'll be paying for. So not the biggest sale on earth or anything. Definitely nothing earth shattering. So it sits on our store for about two to three months and somebody buys it. You know, we don't even think anything of it because again, this is like a very small sale for us that's just trying to recoup some money from a purchase that I probably wouldn't make again, being uh, those kind of mystery boxes. And I, I, I kind of knew that going in that that could happen because I have an understanding of like what mystery boxes entail and everything. And it was a, kind of to make a fun video, but whatever. So anyhow, we ship out the item. A couple months later, I get, I see in my email and it's a message um, and it says eBay, important information about your account. And it had like the MC999 thing in my email. And I'm, I, I look at it and I'm thinking to myself, is this a phishing attack? Like this can't be real. You know, like somebody's found out this email that I've linked to it. They're trying to get into my account. Let me go check the messages on eBay, which is what you should always do whenever you get anything um, in your email that looks kind of weird. Uh, sent to you and lo and behold it was in there so I found out that I was a defendant or named as a defendant in a lawsuit and in this lawsuit there was a bunch of other defendants it wasn't like just me or anything I was just like well great basically what happened was we got this MC999 warning but on top of that there was a restriction placed on our account and we couldn't list any uh, thing that was involving that lawsuit, but there was also just a random list of other things we couldn't list. This will become important in a minute. We made the decision, I, I kind of I made the choice on this a little bit that we would just reach out to them and try and handle it. And typically uh, most people would probably advise if you're brought up in a lawsuit, the first thing you should do is go get a lawyer and those are expensive but they're typically worth it and i'm not going to disagree with the sentiment i'm just saying what 
the direction I decided to go in was. We 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 took some time, crafted a response. You know, we, we're basically like, we're not the droids you're looking for here. You know, we got one of them and they were like, hey, well, thanks for reaching out. Um, where'd you get it? You know, we explained the whole situation and they were really happy about our transparency. If we only had the one, we only sold the one, we didn't intend to sell anymore, uh, really worked out and we were able to handle it. Unfortunately for the content of this video, when it comes to handling the um, a, a, a lawsuit, typically that's confidential and how you go about it. But what I can say about it is at least uh, I know my wife and I were content with how it worked out. We'll just leave it at that. We were like, okay, of course now we're gonna get it lifted. We went to eBay and was we're like, hey, we handled this and you know, we got a little pushback from eBay. And that's kind of where it started to get a little weird. So one of the first issues was like with customer service was just like, hey, uh, unfortunately we can't lift it for you because we want to protect you from lawsuits and all this. And we're like, we, we've handled it. And then Another person couldn't lift it in customer service or whatever. It became a, a, a little bit of a frustration at that point, but we felt like obviously this is going to get lifted. It's a no brainer. They put the MC999 restriction in place because we were sued. We're no longer na uh, named in that lawsuit. They're going to lift it. It's just a matter of getting through to the right person is what we figured. Not too big of a deal. Uh, one of them even mentioned that we could just like, and I, I'm sure this is completely wrong. They mentioned, hey, look, you could just list the item without any brand name in there. And I'm like, I feel like, one, that's killing the keywords. Because you imagine listing Nike shoes, not putting Nike in the title, in the description, in uh, the item specifics, and anything actually happening. Yeah, that's uh, that's not going to work out, first off, from a sales perspective. And then second off, it felt very much like we were trying to circumvent the restriction. And uh, I know that ban evasion, circumventing restrictions, and things like that on basically any platform typically leads to a permanent ban. So when that idea was mentioned, uh, basically, uh, we shrugged that off. And we eventually got in touch with the Vero team. So... The Vero team is basically um, their IP side of things, trying to make sure that eBay is protected and a uh, safe marketplace and yada yada. So we started speaking with uh, the Vero team and basically it was crazy because like as I replied to any emails back and forth, another person would reply. And every time it was basically the same thing. Like we understand your frustration and... We are unable to lift it at this time. We wish to protect you, the rights holder, and eBay from this lawsuit or any future lawsuits. And they just kept basically saying the same thing, ignoring anything I had to say. It became very frustrating. So you're like, hey, what's the problem with the MC999 restriction? So the MC999 restriction essentially makes it to where you can't list certain things. But you don't know what those things are. So one of the items we couldn't list was like a Paw Patrol plush that was used. And there's thousands of them listed and thousands of them sold on eBay right now. So those are being sold all the time on the platform. But we couldn't list it because it seemed like a pet thing, I'm guessing. And because, you know, the whole dog toothbrush thing. Imagine that, but totally random stuff too. So like we couldn't list like an Atlanta Falcons hat that was obviously real and pre-owned so there's a lot of items we couldn't list It's probably about six percent of everything we attempted to list under the restriction fell under said restriction so really it became like such an impediment to our workflow because you're trying to let you can't, you can't find out if it's restricted until you do all the work to go list it and then on top of that that's going to make determinations on like buying decisions nearly impossible because I can't find out if it's restricted until I list it. And if I'm buying 10 things at somebody's yard sale, I can't just be sitting there trying to list them all at his yard sale. I would get kicked out or it would just be too time consuming. So it was one of those things where it started to look like it could put a real impediment on our business. And I didn't know 
what we were going to do. And we were just going back and forth. Like I got in contact with the Vero team and it was just, hey, we understand you're frustrated, but we're doing this to protect you and eBay and the rights holder from future lawsuits. And I'm just like, the whole point of the MC999 was because we had been named in a lawsuit, but now that's handled. Let's get rid of it. And after like, it had to be about two weeks, it felt like on that. And I was really starting to get scared because, you know, my wife and I have poured two years into uh, this iteration of our eBay store and making YouTube videos about it. And I mean, I've been working basically 70 hour weeks the whole time, just nonstop working to try and build up both of them and to see like something that might put that at risk. It was really scary. It's definitely something that contributed to lost sleep at night. It's just a total disruption of workflow and enough, honestly, probably to, if not damage my business, completely destroy it. Eventually, after like three weeks since the lawsuit, uh, probably like two weeks of handling it, we got a message today that they're going to take the restriction off of our account. Thank God that that occurred. I'm grateful to eBay for stepping up now and being a good partner at this point. But yeah, it was, I'm not gonna lie to you guys here for how this went down and having to be like super worried the entire duration of this process. If I was even gonna be able to keep my eBay account for what occurred, uh, it just was wild to me. I don't know what moved the needle, but I am grateful to the person at eBay that came to the conclusion to lift this restriction. And I, I'm ready to move on at this point and keep working on my eBay store. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna necessarily keep my eggs all in one basket like this anymore and be platform dependent. So there may be some shifts there's not going to be significant shifts in the content in this uh, from this because you're still going to see eBay comps while I'm buying stuff and eBay still going to be my primary revenue stream. Just figured I'd share this story with you guys. Unfortunately, if you kind of have questions about what to do with your account and if you have a similar instance, I'm not going to have a ton of answers for you guys. I'm not a legal professional as mentioned before, but what I will say is if you are right and you know you're right on the issue, you just have to keep pushing through it and talking to everybody possible that you can to try to get something like this overturned. And I mean, it could have been way worse. And so I am still grateful to eBay for the opportunity that they have provided me over the last couple years to literally change my life and to be able to then take what has changed my life cre uh, building this eBay store and share it with you guys on YouTube has been one of the most important things I feel like I have ever done in my life. And that's including the army, the several sales positions I've had, etc. I think this probably transcends it all. Should have scripted this. But yeah, with that, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. If you like this video and you like yard sales and thrift stores and hustling, <laughs> then go ahead and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.